Now let me get to Richard Sherman and Skip Bayless. Because for you all, I wanted to play a part of the conversation that Skip Bayless had with Richard Sherman about what had transpired between them on first take more than 11 years ago. Hope before you play the sound, I want to say this to y'all. It was a lengthy conversation and I'm certainly not going to play it in its entirety. But I wanted to make sure that I avoided engaging in revisionist history and really limiting myself to specifically what Skip Bayless was talking about. Because obviously, once upon a time, 11 years ago, Richard Sherman came on First Take when First Take had a special in the afternoon and Richard Sherman was our guest, still a member of the Seattle Seahawks. And he flat out called Skip Bayless out, called them a cretin, said he's better at, 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 at being a human being. And the list went on and on, just lit in the skip. It was one of the most uncomfortable moments any of us have ever seen or experienced in television sports history. It was that bad. And Richard Sherman just went right after Skip Bayless. So the fact that Richard Sherman is now partnering with Skip Bayless on Undisputed is something that took people aback. Well, Skip Bayless, in introducing Richard Sherman, wanted to revisit how things had unfolded and what exactly was going on at the time that Richard Sherman decided to try to undress him on national television on first take 11 years ago in the year 2012. Take a look. Now, more backstory from my side. Mm -hmm. First take at that point was on probation because we had had several incidents, fortunately not involving me. But we were one day away from our audition period trying to stay clean. So I'm thinking quickly as you come after me, oh my God, w w this is terrible because Stephen A badly wanted to get a an afternoon slot so that he could sleep a little longer because he goes late to the games and goes to a lot of games. I'm, I'm pulling for him and for us to get it. Mm -hmm. So I am dancing as fast as I can thinking, I can't really fight fire with my usual fire or this is going to blow up, not that it hadn't already. Right, right. <sighs> Skip Bayless told the truth. We were in dicey situations. No doubt about it. He did not lie to y'all. Um, if you remember, <clears throat> I was considered a relatively controversial individual and obviously I ruffle feathers from time to time, no doubt. There's a lot of mistakes that I made in my career and there's no doubt about that. When I uttered, you know, when I, when I misspoke speaking about the Ray Rice situation, and I didn't articulate my thoughts as cogently as I should have. I had an issue there. But I want to remind everybody, I wasn't the only reason. The part that Skip Bayless did not say is that although First Take had climbed the charts and was really establishing ourselves as the flagship show of the network as opposed to Sports Center, where we were en route to doing that. The part that Skip Bayless left out was the fact that the bosses at the time didn't care. They had remembered that Skip Bayless lived off of talking about Tim Tebow every day before I arrived. They had accused Skip Bayless, meaning the public, of being a caricature of himself. And even though Skip was incredibly proud of his Tim Tebow coverage and what was peeled from it, the bosses weren't necessarily enamored with it. Skip Bayless was incredibly proud of his coverage of Tim Tebow. 
the bosses felt otherwise. And so that's the part he left out. I wasn't the only reason that that probationary period per se existed. It existed because the network wanted to make sure that our show wasn't one that just generated ratings, but one that didn't cause them embarrassment and shame. Now, I didn't want to talk about Tebow every day and I damn sure wasn't going for it and it stopped when I arrived. But to be clear and fair to skip, it did elevate the popularity of the show to some degree, even if people were critical of it. When they talked about Tim Tebow every day, although it got on folks' nerves, the bottom line is there were ratings that came from that and Skip was very, very proud of that coverage. So it's not to throw shade on it from that. I'm just talking about what the bosses felt. The public might have been critical of it, might have minded, some might not have minded, but they still watched. But in the end, they weren't too happy with it. The bosses I'm talking about. That is where the probationary period came from too. So I thought Skip left that out. So I wanted to make sure that I highlighted that. Remember, I was the one that came along and said, why are we talking about Tim Tebow for? The man completes 46% of his passes. He can run. He'd be a great fullback or a tight end in the National Football League, but he ain't no damn quarterback. And you remember that video? All he does is win. All, all he does is win games. Unleash Tim Tebow. It's time. Let him play. Remember all of that that was circulating on social media? Yeah. That's where Skip gets unleashed from. Because of that video. Remember when John Legend came in and sang a song to Skip about Tebow? You know, just not on every show. Skip, won't you let it go? Go Google it, YouTube it, John Legend on first take. That was the song he made. He created it to sing to Skip Bayless to kill the Tim Tebow coverage. In case you doubt what I'm saying to you. Once again, Skip told the truth as it pertained to me. He didn't lie. And I would never accuse him of that. Because he is an honest man for the most part. Not open, but he is honest. But he left that part out about Tim Tebow. And him, that had a lot to do with ESPN's reservation and where he told the gospel to steal from Michael Irvin is when he says Stephen A. wanted to be on in the afternoons because he damn sure did not want to be waking up early in the morning every morning because that is entirely true. I like to go to the games. I like to be in the locker rooms. I like to hang out after games, and I can't do that since I've been doing first take because I got to get up so damn early in the morning to do the show. So my goal was to be to knock it out the park to a point where we get put on in the afternoon. And that way, by being on in the afternoon, I wouldn't have to get up early in the morning and we'd be good. So he's absolutely right. And that appearance by Richard Sherman. Even though Skip didn't go after him for all the reasons Skip articulated accurately, I might add. We didn't get first take put on in the afternoon. They left us in the morning. That appearance by Richard Sherman cost us an afternoon slot for first take. Just so y'all know. 